123.6 volts. So that's our culprit. That's the connection that's bad. That's how you find a bad neutral. Hey, what's up guys? We're just at a call where a customer is complaining of flickering lights and they already had an electrician in earlier today who suspects that it's a bad neutral on our side of things. So I wanted to show you guys, this light's killing me, there we go. I wanted to show you guys how to confirm whether or not a customer does have a bad neutral. So first thing you wanna do is remove the meter and the cover so that you can access the wires in behind the meter. And we're gonna check for voltage using our voltmeter here. So what we wanna do, first we're gonna check across our two hot lugs, our 240, we'll see what we got. And we've got 247. So with no load on, we should expect to see about 122, 123 volts per hot. So we're gonna check our left hot and we've got 123.8 volts and we'll check our right side and we've got 122.4 so the next thing you're going to want to do is put the load back on in order to find a bad neutral by testing voltage there has to be load on those wires load meaning basically power is being used. So we'll put that meter back on, but without the cover. One side, two sides. And then we're simply going to recheck our voltage. You're still gonna get, you're not gonna see any changes across the 240 side of things. But if there's a bad neutral, we should see that voltage go up on one leg and down on the other. As long as it's not a perfectly balanced load. We've got 119 volts on one side. And we've got 126.8 on the other. So the fact that this one side went up, your voltage should never go up on one leg. Our 123 side as I said, went down to 119, so went down four volts, meaning this side should go up by four volts, which it went from 123 to 127. That is 100% a bad neutral. Somewhere's from the testing point, which was right here, up and back out through under our lines. So something else I do want to add is the more off balance the load is, the more that neutral, those bad voltages are gonna show themselves. So if ever you're not getting a clear indication right off the bat that the neutral is bad, get the customer to pop their microwave or a toaster on. Microwave's gonna draw a 15 amp. So this hot, we're drawing 5.3 amps. And this guy, four amps. So there's hardly any load on that at all. In fact, it's even almost a perfectly balanced load. We're only off by an amp or two on each side. And with, with such low amperage, and the fact that we are seeing an increase of three volts on the neutral, that neutral is really bad. If we go and ask the customer to turn their microwave on and, and add 50 amps onto this guy, we will probably see this like shoot up by maybe 20 or 30 volts. You might get a reading of 150 volts on this one leg and then maybe 90 volts on this guy. This is a problem that has to be fixed immediately. Okay, so we're up on the mass now. I already checked the line going through those trees and couldn't find anything. So I figured it must be on the mass at the copper to aluminum connection. You can see there's, if my light will cooperate with us here, you can see there's a bit of corrosion in that connection. It, it could do it, but I wasn't sure, so what we're gonna do here, we put the meter back on so we have our load again, and we're gonna check our 120 on the source side of that connection, and see what we got here. See, we're still getting that 126, 127 volts, 126. 
that's higher than it should be. So that means that's not the problem. If we had to check it on this side and got the 126, 127, and then check on this side, and we got our 122, 123, then we know this is the bad connection. The, the bad connection when checking for bad neutral with your voltage, it's always on the source side of the point that you checked that's, that's giving you that bad reading. So we know the problem is not from here down. We know the problem is out somewhere on the line. Okay, so we're just up here on the transformer now, 50 kVA. This is the customer service right here, this bottom run of triplex. His two hots come right up at this point and this point over here, and this is his neutral. So we've got our lead jammed into one of the hots, and we're gonna check right on the neutral of his service line, and we're still seeing that 128.4 volts. Now, if that connection's bad, we go on the source side of it, which is directly off that transformer. We can even go right off that lug on the transformer up here on that neutral. You see we got our 123 volts. So let's go right down and check out the connection. Service side, 128 volts. And we will go on the source side of the connector, 123.6 volts. So that's our culprit. That's the connection that's bad. That's how you find a bad neutral. And again, guys, this will only work with both load on the service and it has to be an unbalanced load. So you ever see numbers like that? The problem is on the source side of your test point. We're gonna fix this up and uh, hit the road here, guys. So we just put a new connector, new crimp it on that one there, guys, and then rechecked the meter. Everything is good now. When you're testing for a bad neutral, when you have that voltage that went from say 122 122 this guy goes down 10 volts to 112 and this guy goes up 10 volts to 132 that is 100 percent a bad neutral on the source side of the test point what i've seen throw guys off before is when the customer says when i turn this breaker off everything's good and then the person might assume that there's a problem with that particular breaker but there's not what's usually going on in that case is that breaker is feeding something that's causing that off balance and load that's adding that extra 5 10 15 amps to that one hot leg when there's an equal amount of amperage on each hot load or not you're not going to see that bad neutral i was quite surprised to see that slight voltage difference with only one two amps difference per side in most cases, I do have to request that the customer turn on their microwave or toaster or something that's going to draw a good 10 to 12 amps. And then I will see that voltage difference go up respectively on each side. In this case here, if I was seeing 128 volts on one side with an almost perfectly balanced load and I got them to put their microwave on, guarantee that would have sent 150 volts right up through the other side. So you don't want to do that. In fact, if you're getting good voltage, you ask the customer to turn on your microwave, it shoots up to 150, pull the meter off. The quicker you can get that voltage off, the better. It's even a good idea to take a quick peak system before checking anything. Sometimes you'll roll up and see right off the bat that you will bust off the pole. So as I mentioned where the problem is on the source side, let's say you've got triplex running in four span. Instead of having to walk that whole thing, if it's through the trees or whatever, you can literally go from pole to pole you got your 128, you go back the next pole, you got your 128, you go back your next pole, and then boom, you got 123. You know the problem is that way, back towards the 128. As soon as you get good voltage, you've passed that bad connection. So it's just a matter, it's just a process of elimination. So we're gonna keep on trucking, guys. Just gonna edit this one up into a quick clip. Appreciate y'all stopping by, as always, and we'll see y'all soon.